Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Christopher and Susan Edwards? This couple's homicidal adventure was the topic of a four-part HBO series titled Landscapers. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, a look at the background in this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Christopher and Susan Edwards lived in Dagenham, East London, England. The couple met through a dating agency and married in 1983. They never had any children. Christopher worked as a bookkeeper, and Susan was once a librarian. Susan's parents were named William and Patricia Witcherly. They lived in a semi-detached house in Mansfield, England. Susan would make two key allegations against her parents, which become important to the narrative. Number one, when Susan was young, her father had committed assaults of a sexual nature against her. He did this until she was 11 years old. Susan moved out of her parents' house in her 20s and, of course, eventually married Christopher. Number two, Susan had received a 10,000 pound inheritance from her step-grandmother. She used 5,000 pounds to take her mother to Graceland and the other 5,000 pounds to help her parents buy a house. In 1986, her parents convinced her to give up her equity in the house. Susan gave them full ownership. They immediately turned around and sold the house for a profit of over 25,000 pounds. They then moved to another house in Mansfield. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. During the May bank holiday weekend in 1998, Christopher and Susan Edwards used public transportation to make their way to Susan's parents' residence in Mansfield. It is believed that Christopher, acting in a conspiracy with Susan, used a Colt Commando 38 caliber revolver to shoot and kill both 85-year-old William and 63-year-old Patricia as they were in bed. Each of them was shot two times in the chest at approximately the same angle. Christopher started digging a hole in the backyard of the Witcherly's residence, but he ran into a cable. He moved over a few feet and started digging again. Neighbors said they saw Christopher up to his waist, standing in the hole. During the night, he and Susan wrapped the dead bodies in a duvet cover and buried them in the backyard. On the next business day, after the weekend, Susan liberated 40,000 pounds from the Witcherly's bank account. Christopher and Susan pretended that the Witcherly's were still alive. They forged their signatures on documents. They told stories about how the Witcherly's were traveling to places like Ireland. They were having a great time, this grand adventure. The couple lied about the Witcherly's to relatives, neighbors, physicians, and financial institutions. They even forged signatures on Christmas cards. I imagine they wrote something like, Merry Christmas, we are definitely not dead. They did not have to lie to any of the Witcher Lee's friends because the couple did not have any. Christopher and Susan would travel to Mansfield about once every three weeks to maintain the property. They were able to collect the Witcher Lee's pensions and benefits and apply for credit cards and loans using their names. In 2005, a woman parked her car near the Witcherly's house, but forgot to engage the parking brake. The vehicle rolled into the backyard. The bodies were not discovered, but this scared Christopher and Susan. This is often cited as the reason that they decided to sell the Witcherly's house. I think their motivation was more monetary in nature. They were able to keep 66,000 pounds from the sale of the house. Christopher and Susan were able to steal over 286,000 pounds in total, but they did not have much to show for it. Susan had an unusual fascination with old movies. She specifically liked Gary Cooper. The movie High Noon was one of her favorites. Former President Bill Clinton once said that High Noon was his favorite movie. He liked the movie because Gary Cooper's character was defending a town from outlaws and was afraid. Clinton found this to be realistic. I guess he could empathize. His situation was very similar except instead of outlaws, he was afraid of ethics. Susan spent so much money on movie memorabilia, like autographed photos, 
that she and her husband ended up 160,000 pounds in debt. They did not actually live a lavish lifestyle. The vast majority of the spending was on memorabilia. About 15 years after the murders, the Department for Work and Pensions wrote a letter to William Witcherly, which of course was received by Christopher and Susan. The department requested a face-to-face -face interview because they believed that William was approaching his 100th birthday. They also wanted to make arrangements for William to receive a telegram from Queen Elizabeth II. Evidently, it never occurred to Christopher and Susan that people would become suspicious about William's age. I guess they believed they could just keep pretending he was alive indefinitely. After reading the letter, Queen meeting arrangement inspired fear motivated Christopher to steal 10,000 pounds from his employer. The couple then moved to northern France. Desperate for money, Christopher called his elderly stepmother, Elizabeth Edwards, and requested financial assistance. Elizabeth wanted to know why Christopher was in France and needed money. Christopher mentioned how Patricia and William were buried in the backyard of their house. He claimed that Patricia shot William and Susan shot Patricia after being provoked. Elizabeth notified the police. They made their way to the house in Mansfield and found the bodies of the Witcherleys. As the investigation continued, Christopher sent an email to the police. He told them that he and Susan would surrender. The couple took a train to the United Kingdom and the police arrested them. They pleaded guilty to obstructing a coroner and theft of a credit balance, but as far as the murder, they had a different story. They maintained that Patricia used a pistol to shoot William and threw the pistol on the bed. Susan confronted Patricia right after this happened because she was in the house visiting at that time. Susan picked up the pistol. Patricia claimed to be having an affair with Christopher in order to provoke Susan. Her efforts were successful. Susan shot and killed her. So really the same story that Christopher had told Elizabeth Edwards. Patricia shot William and Susan shot Patricia. Christopher and Susan Edwards were convicted of murder in 2014. They were sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Now moving to my analysis. Christopher and Susan Edwards maintained a very isolated lifestyle. The couple had no children. Their neighbors barely knew them. They didn't socialize. The couple didn't have any friends whatsoever. They kept to themselves pretty much all the time. Even though the couple had stolen hundreds of thousands of pounds, they did not have a car, and they wore inexpensive clothing. By no means did they have a flashy lifestyle. For most of the marriage, Christopher worked and Susan stayed at home. She rarely left the house. Neighbors described the couple as ghosts. They said that Susan rarely spoke to anyone, whether she was alone or with Christopher. She just kept her head down all the time. Christopher would talk to people, but just what was necessary to be polite. People who met the couple described them as in love, but it appeared as though they lived in their own fantasy world. People thought they were strange, but nobody suspected that they were killers. Perhaps some of Susan's behavior was inspired by her parents. They lived in a similar manner. The Witcherleys had no friends. Their neighbors barely knew them. They would churn down invitations from their neighbors for parties and other events. Some of their neighbors wondered if they were brother and sister instead of a married couple. When the police searched the Witcherly's house, they would find only two photographs of William. They did not find any photographs of Patricia. Only 14 people attended the Witcherly's funeral. None of them were able to say they actually knew the couple. The isolated lifestyles of both couples created an opportunity for the double homicide and subsequent fraud. Moving to the next question, were Christopher and Susan guilty of the homicides? They pleaded guilty to other charges, but that doesn't mean they committed the murders. Christopher Edwards maintained that he had no part in the homicides. Susan maintained that she was provoked, so she was guilty of something like manslaughter, but not murder. Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that they were guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Christopher and Susan disposed of their parents' bodies not long after they were shot to death and over the course of 15 years impersonated them and took their money. Susan claims that she shot 
her mother. This doesn't mean she actually fired the weapon. The police think that Christopher did, but it does place Susan at the scene of the murders. Christopher had access to a 38 caliber revolver and liked military antiques. The murder weapon was thought to be a Colt Commando, which is a World War II era firearm. Christopher's version of events had Susan committing manslaughter on one weekend. The next weekend, he traveled down to Mansfield and disposed of the bodies with Susan's help. That means the bodies were sitting there for a week. He made no mention of smelling the bodies. If they had really been there for a week, there is no way he could have missed that odor. Christopher and Susan always worked as a pair. It's hard to believe that one of them would act alone. Moving to the exculpatory factors, there were no witnesses, there's no video, and no physical evidence connecting the couple to the murders. In theory, Susan could have murdered her mother and her father without being in a conspiracy with Christopher. So it's possible that Susan was guilty, but Christopher was not guilty. When weighing all the evidence, do I think that they were guilty of murder? I think they were guilty in reality and guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There's really no question that Susan was involved because of her admissions to the police. I think that one could make a case for reasonable doubt with Christopher, but the fact that he lied about the circumstances surrounding the crime, buried the victim's bodies, and participated in the theft makes him look pretty guilty. Moving to the next question, what do I think actually happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Christopher and Susan became very close to one another. At some point, they became lost in similar fantasy worlds. Christopher was fascinated with military history and world leaders, like Charles de Gaulle. Susan became fascinated with old movies, mostly from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. This fantasy world dominated their lives. I think the commitment to fantasy started with Susan and eventually transmitted to Christopher. After Christopher's brother died, his mood became depressed. He was vulnerable to Susan's influence. To cheer him up, Susan impersonated a French actor named Gerard Depardieu. She sent letters to Christopher as if they were from Gerard. She even found a way to make a postmark from France. Receiving these letters eliminated some of Christopher's concerns about the investment in Hollywood figures. They seemed benevolent to him. After all, Gerard took time out of his day to send these letters to Christopher. At least that is what Christopher believed. Over time, Susan developed a distorted sense of morality. Old Gary Cooper movies, like High Noon, feature a very clear-cut version of right and wrong. There is always a good guy and a bad guy. There is nothing in between. Over time, Susan started to picture herself as a character in one of these old movies. She placed Christopher and her parents in them as well. Susan and Christopher were the good guys, and the Witcherlies were the bad guys. Susan tried to reconcile the mistreatment she suffered at the hands of her father and how her parents took what she believed to be her inheritance. She processed her experience through the lens of absolute good and absolute evil and determined her parents needed to pay for their behavior. Susan was able to justify killing her parents and taking their money. Christopher participated in the murders as well due to his devotion to Susan. The couple used the money to fund their fantasy life. Susan was okay with the homicides, but Christopher struggled. He wanted to keep Susan happy, but she kept spending money when they were already in debt. His ill-advised statement to his stepmother resulted in the arrest. The couple tried to put together a story that they thought would minimize their prison time when they should have said nothing. They talked themselves right into life in prison. Now moving to my thoughts on the four-part HBO series, Landscapers. On the positive side, the production was very creative. They took the characters and put them in these various scenarios, like in a Western movie, which is consistent with my conceptualization of the case. I think this style really captured how the couple was in this fantasy world. It brought it to life on the screen. I also liked the acting, especially Olivia Coleman as Susan Edwards. On the negative side, the series really took too long. It was about 50 minutes per episode. It could have been an hour and a half total, and that would have been fine. There was not enough substance to justify that length. 
Even though the production was creative, it was a bit over-stylized at times. It detracted from the story to some degree. Even with the long runtime of the series, they still didn't really explain all the details of the crime. There were elements missing from the story, and there should not have been in that length of time. Moving to my final thoughts. This case may have involved delusions, perhaps something like folia do, shared psychotic disorder, but the couple did not appear to be psychotic. They had a distorted view of the world and an enormous investment in fantasy, but they went to great lengths to escape the consequences of their crimes. I think their fantasy world functioned like a drug. They were willing to do anything to maintain access to it. When the money was gone, it did not matter to them if they were in prison or not. They had lost their reason to live. They were detached from the fantasy. Those are my thoughts on the case of Christopher and Susan Edwards. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.